Okay, so here we're looking at this following fairly technical result that allows us to take solutions to polynomial congruences mod p and boost them to polynomial congruences, solutions to polynomial congruences mod powers of p. So let's look at the statement. So given a prime p, some number e, which is bigger than or equal to 2, and um, a polynomial with integer coefficients, if a is a solution to f of x is congruent to 0 mod p to the e minus 1, and if the GCD of P and F prime of A equals 1, there is a solution to F of X is congruent to 0 mod P to the E. So notice that's 1 power of P larger than what we had before. And it's of the form B equals A plus K P to the E minus 1. And this K satisfies this following congruence down here. So f of a over p to the e minus 1. So we'll have to make some, take some meaning from that as we work through the proof. Plus k times f prime of a is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so the statement of this is kind of a mouthful. But if you notice, the takeaway is that this gives us a strategy for taking solutions um, of polynomial equivalences modulo a power of a prime and constructing solutions modulo a larger power of that same prime. So if we have a solution for the prime to the first power, we can boost that to solutions to the second power, the third power, and so on and so forth by repeated applications of this lemma. Okay, good. So now we see the usefulness of this lemma. Let's look at the proof. So the proof goes as follows. So since f of a is congruent to 0 mod p to the e minus 1, so that tells us that p to the e minus 1 divides f of a, which further tells us that this object f of a over p to the e minus 1 is an integer. Good. So that's an integer that's not a rational number. So that's good. So now let's also consider the linear congruence given by the following. So it's given by y or actually let's write it like this, f prime of a times y is congruent to negative f of a over p to the e minus 1 modulo p. So we have a linear congruence here because f prime of a is just a number and now this is a number and it happens to be an integer from what we noticed above and we're looking at this congruence modulo p. So since we have this hypothesis that the GCD of f prime of a and p is equal to 1. This has a unique solution. Maybe let's call it k. Call it k. So in other words, we know that f prime of a times k equals um, negative f of a over p to the e minus 1 um, mod p. Good. So it looks like we've constructed our solution to this uh, congruence down here. So now let's see how we can use that to take this solution to this uh, polynomial congruence mod p to the e minus 1 and boost it to um, a solution mod p to the e. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll get to that. Okay, so let's recall from the beginning of the proof that we've done so far, we have f of a is congruent to 0 mod p to the e minus 1, and we have k is a number that satisfies the following um, equivalence. So k times f prime of a is equal to negative f of a over p to the e minus 1 mod p. So now let's set b equal to a time, or sorry, a plus k times p to the e minus 1. And so what we want to show is that this is a solution to the modular 
uh, equation f of x is congruent to 0 mod p to the e, so we'll get there. And so let's also set f of x equal to the sum i equal 1 to n of c i x to the i. So those are the two things that we'll work with. And now, um, so what we want to show is that f of b is congruent to 0 mod p to the e, and we'll do that. So let's take f of b, and notice that that's equal to um, f of a plus k times p to the e minus 1, but we can throw that into our expansion that we have for f. So this is the sum i equals 0 to n of ci times a plus k p to the e minus 1 all to the i power. Okay, good. So now, further, notice that this equals the sum i equals 0 to n of ci, and now we can use the binomial theorem on this, but we'll only use part of uh, the terms from the binomial theorem. So notice that this expands out as a to the i, good, plus i times a to the i minus 1 times k to the p to the e minus 1, good, and then plus p to the 2 e minus 1, and then this is going to be times more. So let's talk through this bit. So here we have i choose 0, um, a to the i times all of this to the zero power. And then we have i choose 1, a to the i minus 1, then all of this to the first power. And all of the rest of the terms will have powers of p to the 2 times e minus 1 and higher. So that means we can factor out a p to the power 2 e minus 1 out of the whole thing. And now notice that because e is bigger than or equal to 2, all of this stuff that's left over is congruent to 0 mod p to the e. So since we want to show this whole thing is congruent to 0 mod p to the e, it means we don't have to consider that bit anymore. Okay, great. So what I want to do now is take this into two sums and see what we can do. So this is equal to the sum i equals 1 to n of ci a to the i, good, and then plus, so we can take out a k p to the e minus 1 out of this next sum, and then we're left with the sum i equals 0, and I should be starting all these sums at 0, to the n of i uh, ci a to the i minus 1. Good. So now notice that this first term is simply f of a. Good. And this second term is equal to k times p to the e minus 1. And look, this looks like a derivative, right? So the power of the exponent is one less than this coefficient. And so this is, in fact, f prime of a. Okay, good. So what we've shown is that f of b is equal to um, f of a plus k p to the e minus 1 f prime of a. So I'll clean up the board and we'll start from this uh, point. Okay, so now we're ready to finish off the proof. So just as a reminder from our previous steps, we have f of a is congruent to 0 mod p to the e minus 1. Um, furthermore, we have k times f prime is equal to negative f of a over p to the e minus 1 mod p. We have b is equal to a plus k p to the e minus 1, and we've expanded out f of x as follows, which we don't actually need that anymore. Good. And so now uh, we'll notice that this term looks suspiciously like this term right here. Good. And so, uh, notice that that tells us the following. We can say that um, k times f prime of a is congruent to negative f of a over p to the e minus 1 mod p. Good. 
But now if we multiply um, both sides of this linear congruence, or this congruence by p to the e minus 1, we'll end up with this bit in yellow, but that means we also have to raise this, or multiply that to the p to the e minus 1 by a uh, proposition that we had in the past. So that's what we'll do if we multiply this whole thing by p to the e minus 1, we'll get the following. That will tell us that k times p to the e minus 1 f prime of a is congruent to minus f of a mod p to the e. Great. So now we're virtually done. Now we can look at f of b mod p to the e. So we'll have f of b so that's congruent to f of a, and then since now we're working mod p to the e, we can replace this bit that's yellow underlined with minus f of a, which is congruent to zero mod p to the e. And so we in fact did construct our solution to this polynomial equivalence.